Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. So, for some reason, I really like these old Amstrads, but their usability is very, very limited. Sometimes you get one, maybe two floppy drives, and that's it. What if there's a way we can get more out of it? Here is a board I made. It plugs into the back of the PC and gives you three ISA slots. Let's see what we can get up to with that. This is the expansion board. I use 74HCT244 non-inverting buffers on the 16 pins that were referenced in the technical manual. And I also use 10K pull-up resistors on the eight memory data pins. To keep wiring as simple as possible, I used a 40 pin ID cable with IDC D-type connectors crimped on either end. So for the first boot, I'm just going to leave it on the LCD screen and after that we'll use the monitor. So I'm just running 622 DOS on this compact flash. Okay, now that it's booted, I want to go in to check it and see how fast the hard drive is on that interface. So 176k a second. That's not too bad for an 8086, but this machine is based on the NEC V30, so I think we can do a bit better than that. Run XT IDE CFG. We can load up the BIOS that's faster and the V30s. Well, it's still booted, that's a good sign. Let's check it again. Okay, good benchmark. 450k a second. That's not bad at all. What if we had some extra memory? Confirm 640k. But we can do more than that. Okay, what are we doing right now? 593k free. Just use the speakers in this monitor. Here we go.
Lastly, I wanted to check out some video cards on the expansion. This is a Paradise EGA card. It's multifunction, it has mono, CGA, and EGA, and it can also auto detect. Here I'm using it in 200 line EGA mode. This is a monochrome card, um, Hercules, I think. And because it occupies a different address space in memory, it can coexist with the onboard CGA. Links for the schematics and the Gerber files for this board will be in the description below, as well as any ANSI files that I used here. So thanks for watching and see you next time.